Hi, welcome to Kitchen Chemistry with Essential Wholesale and Labs. I'm Tinika, and today we're going to be focusing on pH and what it does and why it matters. So let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about pH. The first thing that you need to know how to do is how to measure pH. So um, these pH strips you can find on our website and also in the description of this video. Um, you'll find a link to the strips, but basically it's pretty easy to measure pH. And what I have here in this um, beaker is uh, deionized water, which you can also get on our website. It's great for making your cosmetics. Um, you just basically, you dip the strip into your product or solution, in this case water, and then you simply match up on the color chart where the pH is. So you can see this pH is right about where it should be. It looks like a, it's right at six and a half which is normal pH is right between, you know, six and a half, seven. Um, seven is considered neutral, so this is right there at neutral, um, almost right at neutral, slightly acidic maybe. Uh, so anyways, um, that's how you measure pH. It's really that simple. Um, you can uh, easily see that it's, it's, it's really not that hard to do. Um, it becomes a little more difficult if you have a darkly colored product. Um, you may need a pH meter, but we'll talk about that in another time. So anyways, pH strips. So the importance of pH, um, it affects all kinds of things. So pH for skin is right about four and a half to five and a half. Um, so having your product sit at the proper pH for skin means that it will be able to do its job and it will um, help protect the skin's acid mantle, which is where um, the sebum is produced and it also uh, is very sensitive to pH. So um, it's something to keep in mind when you're formulating. It's pretty important. Um, hair pH, now the scalp obviously is also skin, but hair pH is a little bit lower. Um, it sits at more about a three and a half. So you want to adjust um, pH products for hair depending on the desired effect. So um, we can talk about that more uh, as we talk about conditioners um, in, in other videos. But this video is all about pH. So what I have here is um, simply uh, deionized water mixed with a water-soluble um, vegetable-based uh, colorant. Um, or pigment, I guess, if you want to call it that. And I'm going to show you how dramatically pH can affect the color of your products too. So this is an important thing to consider when you're formulating. So I'm just simply going to pour this colored water into these two separate little ramekins. And I'm going to adjust the pH using citric acid and baking soda. So, if I add citric acid, it will lower the pH, making the product more acidic. And by the way, pH stands for potential of hydrogen, meaning it's the available hydrogen ions in the solution. So that's what you're measuring here. So you can see the color went from this deep red to a much brighter red as we get it more acidic. Now, if you adjust it more, it's gonna brighten that color quite a bit more. So now, if I dry off my beaker, or my little thing here, and I add baking soda to the other side and mix that in, you can see that it changes that color pretty dramatically. So what I've done is I've increased the pH, making this a more alkaline solution. So you can see, well hopefully you can see, that's a really like brilliant blue now. So we've gone from a purple in our original beaker to a bright red by going more acidic and a deep blue by going more alkaline. So now, this is where it does get a little bit tricky because these are colored solutions. It makes reading pH a little harder with the strips, but it can still be done. So I'm going to dip my strip into the solution and I'm going to see where it falls. And you can see that the, that the red has affected the, the yellow, obviously red and yellow make orange, but you can still gauge where that pH sits. So it's obviously 
pretty low. It looks like it's sitting between two, two and a half. Maybe two and a half, three. So it's pretty low. So we know that's acidic. So if we go over here, again, if you need an accurate, like deadly accurate pH measurement, you're going to have to use a meter. Okay, so if we go over here and we look at this one, you can see the pH is probably closer over here. I would say it's probably between seven and a half and eight on the scale. And like I said, I mean, once you start experimenting with the strips and, and learning how to read the pH, you'll be more confident in using it for colored solutions. It definitely is a challenge, but it can be done. If you don't want to use citric acid to adjust your pH, to lower the pH, you can also use lactic acid. Um, it's, a little bit, uh, it's a little bit harder to work with if you have a lotion or cream, um, so you might want to experiment with that, but um, it's, they're, they're all fairly easy to use. Uh, citric acid and baking soda are my favorites because they seem to work easily into any product, so I really like to use those two, but if you prefer not to use cit citric acid, lactic acid is your choice. So we hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for joining us today. You can find links to the pH strips, to the deionized water, and to the baking soda, lactic acid, and citric acid by clicking the more button directly below this video. Be sure to subscribe for more fun videos, and thanks for joining us.